Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. Hoping to get one over on our quiz champions today are the Fox Cubs. Now, this team were in the same sixth form class at Manchester Grammar School and recently reunited for the first time in nearly 50 years. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Roger and I'm an emeritus professor of law. Hi, I'm Graham and I'm a writer. Hi, I'm John and I'm a retired property consultant. Hi, I'm Ian and I'm a retired civil servant. Hi, I'm Richard and I'm a psychometrics consultant. So, Roger, team, welcome. Great to see you. Hello. 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 And, Hello. Roger, was it great to see each other when you all reunited? Yes, it was, yes. And did you have that amazing thing where you could just pick up straight away? Oh, absolutely, yes. Really? Yes. And I should ask you about the team name. Fox Cubs relates to your teacher. He was our form master and English teacher, Jeff Fox. And still with us, I gather? Yes, still with us. And what, knows maybe... all about this. <laughs> may be watching today and cheering you on. Uh, he says oh. he will, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a good teacher? Very good teacher, yes. That makes all the difference, doesn't it, kids? Anyone, anyone here had a great teacher? Oh, yes, I had, a, I had a fantastic um, biology teacher. Yeah. Uh, and but I was going to drop biology A-level, but it was, it was her that sort of encouraged me to keep with it. And now it's your career. Yeah. yeah, I had a great English teacher. So, good luck. Summon up the spirit of the class. <laughs> Stay united here in the face of the onslaught. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. If they fail to defeat the Eggheads, that prize money rolls over to our next show. So, Fox Cubs, the Eggheads have won just the last game. That means there's £2,000 for you if you win today. Would you like to try? Uh, yes, yes, please. please. OK, let's go for it. The first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of geography. You can choose either Judith, Beth, Pat, Steve or Chris. Uh, well, who's going to go for it? Do you, do you want to? Do you want to? One of us, presumably. Yes. Um, fine. Shall I go? Yes. OK. Graham. I'll go. OK, Thanks. Graham, our writer, against which I get any one of the five. Beth. Beth, yes, that's what I was going to think of. Yes, Beth. Beth. Please. Please. OK, one of the newest eggheads. So, Graham from the Fox Cubs versus Beth from the eggheads on geography. And please, both of you, go to our question room now. Well, I understand you worked in a library, Graham, did you? Yes, I was a librarian for uh, nearly 40 years. And it, it was where? Oh, various different places. Most of the time I was working for a, a, an international law firm as their head of information services. But before that, I was at... Uh, Hull University and Kingston Polytechnic. And if, if we say to the A kids, University of Hull Library, what's Philip your immediate Larkin. name? You? Philip Larkin. Philip Larkin, yes. who, you know, one of the undoubtedly great poets of the 20th century, who I understand worked in the library just down the corridor, did he? Oh, he was my boss. So, as somebody once said, you met him as he lived? Yeah, sure. He was rather, rather reserved, so one didn't <laughs> see him a lot. He stayed in his office a lot, but I, I just had a few very pleasant conversations with him over the, uh, the year or two that I was there. I promise you don't have to say he's a nice guy. I'm assuming he was quite grumpy at times. But... Oh, very, yes. <laughs> but those poems, you, do you love them yourself? I do. Yeah, remarkable, remarkable. Good stuff on geography, then. I'm sorry it's not arts and books, but there we go. Geography for you against Beth. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. Here we go. Geographically speaking, which of these countries occupies a large proportion of the Scandinavian peninsula? Sweden, Denmark or Iceland? Well, Iceland isn't in the peninsula. Um, and I assume the peninsula is the bit that includes Norway, Sweden and Finland, so Denmark wouldn't be included in that. So I think the answer must be Sweden. Sweden is right. Well done. Over to you, Beth. Hobart is the capital of which state of Australia? Hobart, is that New South Wales, Western Australia, or Tasmania? Uh, well, luckily, I'm not afflicted with the same gaping hole of Australia as Lisa is. I'm pretty sure that's Tasmania. Yes, yeah, she would fly into a panic if she saw this question. Tasmania is right. OK, Graham. The equator passes through which of these countries? Mexico, Indonesia, or South Africa? Well, the equator passes through South America, so it won't go through Mexico. It certainly doesn't get anywhere near South Africa, so the answer must be Indonesia. You're very good. Indonesia's right. So, Graham, ahead. Can Beth catch up? What is the approximate population of Saudi Arabia? Beth, is it 32 million, 64 million, or 96 million? 
Wow. Um, hmm. It's a big country. Does it have a similar population to Great Britain? Or does it have half of that? Hmm. Probably half of that. 32 million. You've done very well there. Mm. It's not an easy question. 32 million is right. Toe to toe, <laughs> Graham. Here we go. Your third question. Wagadougou is the capital of which African country? Is it Benin, Burkina Faso, or Botswana? Well, the capital of Benin is Porto Novo. The capital of Botswana is Gaborone. And the capital of Burkina Faso is Ouagadougou. Good quizzing. Burkina Faso is right. He knows his capitals, Beth. Yeah, he does. We can tell a quizzer a mile off, can't yeah. we? OK, your question to stay in. What is the capital of the French département of Gironde? Bordeaux, Paris, or Le Havre? And the Gironde, uh, the, well, that's certainly not Paris, and Le Havre is up on, um, on the Brittany Normandy coast, so it's got to be Bordeaux. Well done again, Bordeaux it is. So perfect round for you both so far, three out of three. You go to sudden death, Graham. It gets a little bit harder. I don't give you options. Are you ready? Yeah. Which Benelux country has a name that translates from its native language into English as low country? Um, the Netherlands. Netherlands is right. Or Nederland, as it is to them. Beth to stay in. Mount Bekdu, the highest mountain in North Korea, lies on the border between that country and which other? <laughs> now, now, with Lisa's gaping hole over Australia, my gaping hole is over East Asia. Um, well, I'm going to, fingers crossed, and hope that North Korea joins itself up with China. So, China. China is correct. OK, Graham. Netherthorpe, Pittsmoor and Darnall are suburbs of which English city? So, we're talking... Possibly Moorland. I've never heard of any of them. I'm going to go for Nottingham. Do you know this, Beth? No, it's maybe slightly more north of Nottingham, but Leeds, possibly, Sheffield? Sheffield is the answer, Graham. Um, so, Beth, you have a chance to take the round now with this question. The flag of Ghana features a black star and how many different coloured bands? Three. Three is right. Red, yellow and green. Well done, you're in the final. Well played, though, Graham. That was a really fearsome challenge you put in there. <laughs> you're very good. Please come back to us, both of you, and we will play on. As it stands, the Fox Cubs have lost one brain from the final round. The Eggheads haven't lost any so far. The next subject for you is science. So who was the science standout in class? Uh, we didn't do science. We didn't do science. <laughs> <laughs> there was no swap. Liberal arts. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes. Okay. I think I've been nominated as the fall guy here. John, okay. John is uh, our expert on science. Retired <laughs> property consultant against which egghead? Anyone but Beth? Judith. I would say Judith. Judith. Of those yeah. Yes. Judith, Judith, please. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I can hear a strange noise. Is that you <laughs> saying no or it's yes? It's me or... groaning. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but why would you groan at science? Because I've never had a science lesson in my life. Oh, have you not? No. We're in the same boat, Judy. <laughs> oh, you're, you're in the same boat? Yes. OK. All right, well, let's see. Somebody may be hiding their knowledge here. John from the Fox Cubs versus Judith from the Eggheads to ensure there's no conferring. Please take your positions in our famous question room. John, I know that, uh, that many of the team members are very decorated in their, in their lives since school, and you won the Cromwell Prize in 1972? Yes, that was uh, given by my university, East Anglia, on uh, historical research into Oliver Cromwell. Brilliant. And you got a sort of monetary prize or whatever, and well, what, did you, what did you do with it? Spent it on a, a celebratory party, and uh, <laughs> they um, informed my uh, tutor what I'd spent the money on, only to get, instead of a letter of congratulations, I got a letter back saying you sh uh, should have realised it was to be spent on furthering your research into Oliver Cromwell. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, uh, the money had gone, so it was too late. Well, hopefully you talked about Cromwell at the party. Uh, no, I, this was a, a story that uh, I've never told any of my, ch uh, my, uh, my colleagues here in the team. And uh, so this is the first they've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> John, would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please, Jeremy. 
Your question. A salinometer is a device used to read the percentage of what substance in a solution? Alcohol, oxygen, or salt? Well, saline um, will be salt. Salt is quite right. Judith, your question. What is the scientific study of insects known as? Is this seismology, entomology, or psychology? Well, it's not psychology or seismology, so it's um, entomology. Are you sure it's not psychology? Oh, definitely. That's the mind. <laughs> <laughs> entomology is right. OK, back to you, John. The Human Genome Project, the aim of which was to map all the genes on the human chromosomes, was begun in which year? 1970, 1990 or 2010? Uh, it's not an answer that immediately springs to mind. I have a... F I think it was before 2010. I would go for 1990. 1990 is the right answer. Judith, often used in food products, gelatin is a substance derived from which protein? Keratin, plexin or collagen? Gelatin. I thought it came from beef and there was great uh, worry about it when um, the mad cow disease scare happened. I think it's keratin. Now, here you've gone astray, Judith. Oh, dear. It is collagen. It's collagen. That's what holds skin together, doesn't it? Gelatin is... De yes, maybe that's the beef connection. Um, I thought keratin had something to do with your hair. What, you mean like gel? Well, <laughs> no, not that you put on your hair, but <laughs> it sort of held the hair together. Well, that is made gel, is strong. Isn't it? Collagen is right. I'm sorry you've fallen foul of keratin there, Judith. So you can actually take the round now, John, with this answer. The yellow, brown, transparent gem citrine is a variety of which mineral? Quartz, gypsum or diamond? Citrine is C-I-T-R-I-N-E, citrine. I don't think it's... I don't think it's diamond. I think... I think it's... I don't think it's gypsum either. I think it's quartz. The correct answer is quartz. Well done, John. You got three out of three. Judith, you've fallen by the wayside. I'm afraid you've been knocked out. You'll be in the sin bin mm. in the final round. Mm. There we are. Bit of a problem on science. Maybe, maybe she's right. But, John, that's good news for your team. Please come back to the studio and we will play the next round. As it stands, the Fox Cubs have lost one brain from the final round and you've just turned and knocked one of theirs out. The Eggheads have lost one too. So it's getting a bit lively now. The next subject is sport. Who would like this, Roger? Ian. Ian. I will Ian. take that, Jeremy. OK, Ian, our retired civil servant against... Chris let me see, Chris, Chris Steve or Pat? Taking Chris, apparently. <laughs> OK, somebody watches the show. Ian <laughs> from the Fox Cubs is taking on Chris on sport. I'll get me coat. <laughs> no, you don't get your coat, get your, get your donkey jacket, and off we go. To ensure there's no conferring, please go to the question room. So, sport against Chris. Ian, would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please, Jeremy. And here is your question. How far to the nearest foot does the Oki stand from the board in a professional game of darts? 8, 12 or 15? Um, uh... If you were throwing darts from 15 feet, you'd have to be pretty good or have a good screen around the audience, I think. Um, I believe it's eight. I believe it's eight. Chris, you know this? Yeah, it's eight feet, yeah. Eight is the answer. Well done. That's the key thing. Eight is right. Chris, your question. Which Japanese martial art has a name that translates as way of the sword? Chris, is it judo, kendo or karate? Well, judo's the gentle way, karate's empty hand, and in kendo, they belabour themselves with uh, bamboo rods, like swords, so it's kendo. Yes, and they wear kind of helmets and stuff. Mm. Kendo's right. OK, back to you, Ian. The footballer Jens Lehmann played in which position for both club and country? Goalkeeper, wing-back or centre-forward? Um, I've seen him playing, um, so I won't discuss it. Uh, Jens Lehmann was a goalkeeper. He won't discuss it because he played for a... a, a he a, played for a, the wrong team, so let's <laughs> I know who you're talking about. Oh, we can mention Arsenal. But no, this is about Germany, and you're right anyway. Goalkeeper's correct. Chris, the winter sport of bandy is most similar to which of the following? Ski jumping, ice hockey or curling? 
bandy. They play it in Ireland, don't they? Um, it's got ski jumping. And curling, they have to play on ice, so it's not curling. I think bandy is an extremely vicious game played on grass that's a bit like ice hockey, so that's the answer, ice hockey. Let's see if the eggheads know, is he right? He's right, it's like yeah. ice hockey. It's played on ice, though, but it's, it's like ice hockey. Chris, you're right. <laughs> ice hockey, we gather from Paddy's, played on ice. Uh-huh. All right, so 2-2. Two, two. Ian, it's tense. Here's your question. The Scottish athlete Laura Muir specialises in what kind of event? Ian, high jump, sprint hurdles, or middle distance running? Oh, this is very embarrassing in Glasgow. Um, I'm afraid this is going to have to be a punt. I'm awfully sorry. I'm going to say middle distance running. Middle distance running is the right answer. <sighs> three out of three. OK, Chris, your question. Published in 2016, Unguarded is the title of which England cricketer's autobiography? Ben Stokes, Michael Vaughan or Jonathan Trott? <sighs> Unguarded. Hmm. Possibly a wicketkeeper. Well, none of those are known for making unguarded remarks. So, spin a three-sided coin. Straight down the middle, Michael Vaughan. Sorry, Chris, it's, it's Jonathan Trop. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, you've been knocked out by Ian. We've got three out of three, which is always handy. You took on an egghead, Ian, you emerged triumphant. So, advantage to your team now. This is getting exciting. Come back to us, we'll play the last round before the final. So, as it stands, the Fox Cubs have lost one from the final round. The Eggheads have lost two brains from the final round. Let's savour this moment, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good moment. Now you need to drive it home with the next round, the last one before the final. Knock another Egghead out, game on. Film and TV is the subject. So it's going to be Richard or Roger? That must be me. OK, Richard. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Psychometrics consultant against which Egghead? Pat or Steve? Toss that really. I'd think? say Steve. I'd probably. say Steve. Oh, Steve, please. Yeah. Very good. Richard from the Fox Cubs is going to play Steve from the Eggheads. Please, for the last time, go to the question room. So, film and TV, do you want to go first or second against Steve? Uh, first, please. Who presents the UK version of the TV show I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here? Anton Deck, Keith Lemon, or Davina McCall? Right. I was scientifically chosen for this particular subject because I don't watch television. So, I am going to have to make a guess um, on no information at all. Uh, Anton Deck. No, you've got it. Anton Deck is right. They're the ones in the, <laughs> in the jungle. <laughs> OK, Steve. <laughs> Steve, your question. Who played Detective Roger Murta? in the Lethal Weapon series of films, starring opposite Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, Eddie Murphy, or Carl Weathers? Well, to the best of my knowledge, the only one that was in those films is Danny Glover. So, that's my answer. Danny Glover is quite right. Richard, which Only Fools and Horses character was played by Leonard Pierce? Uncle Albert, Trigger, or Grandad? Right. Um... This got me thinking frantically. Um, it, I'm ruling out Trigger. Scientifically, it must be Uncle Albert, because it's on the left. Is that scientific? <laughs> <laughs> That's how Judas rule is you go down the right. All right, Uncle Albert, Uncle Albert. Now, wait, was, it, was Uncle Albert in something, Steve? What was he in? Well, it was in Only Fools and Horses, but I think that was Buster Merrifield. And who played Trigger? Uh, Roger Lloyd Pike. And so the answer here is Grandad. Richard, I'm sorry. Good to see you um, showing off all your facts there, Steve. Impressive. All of them, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got some spare, I know that. Here's your question. Which actress played the role of Clara Oswald in the TV series Doctor Who from 2012 to 2015? Jenna Coleman, Karen Gillan, or Billy Piper? Well, Doctor Who is a show I absolutely adore. I've watched it for years, um, since Tom Baker was on it. So I know full well that's Jenna Coleman. It is the brilliant Jenna Coleman, you're right. Who then popped up in Victoria, didn't she? She did indeed. Yeah, great actress. So he's in the lead, Richard, and it's not panic stations, but it would be good if you got this one right. 
Well, more than that, you do need to, actually, you must get it right, <laughs> to stay in. No two ways about it. What is the name of the organization that the hero works for in the 1960s puppet TV series, Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons? International Rescue, World Intelligence Network, or Spectrum? As I said, I'm applying strict scientific theory to this, and I go for international rescue. Oh. No. <laughs> Let's see if your teammates agree. I, I heard a groan. No? no. Well, international rescue was definitely Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds, yeah. yes, yes, that was. Yeah. So, which one is this, do you know? Mm. Spectrum. Spectrum. You think Spectrum? Steve, what would you say? Spectrum. Spectrum is the answer, Richard. Spectrum is the answer. I'm sorry, so Steve has taken the round. No way back for you, and that really leaves it in an interesting position for the final, because you're going to be perched equally. Please return to us, gents, and we will play that final round. That's what we have been playing towards. It is time for our final round, and as always, it's general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So Graham and Richard from the Fox Cubs, and Chris and Judith from the Eggheads, would you please now leave the studio? Roger, John, Ian, you're playing to win the Fox Cubs £2,000, hopefully with Mr Fox watching, your old teacher. Steve, Pat and Beth, you're playing for something that money can't buy, the Eggheads reputation. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. They're all general knowledge and you can confer, gentlemen. So the question is, can your three brains defeat these three super brains over here? And Roger, John, Ian, would you like to go first or second? Uh, we'll go first, please, Jeremy. OK, here's your question. The term dick is sometimes used as a slang term for which professional? The term Dick is sometimes used as a slang term for which professional? Doctor, dentist or detective? De yeah, it's detective. detective. I don't think we need it's to it. discuss that. Uh, detective. Detective, yes, in lots of... I was thinking Raymond Chandler yeah. books and yeah. all of that, Big Sleep and so on. Yeah, detective's right. OK, I get to the question. The trainer, Angelo Dundee, who died in 2012, was a leading name in which sport? Was Angelo boxing, horse racing, or athletics? Boxing, boxing. It is, yeah. I think he famously trained, yeah, people like Muhammad Ali. He was a boxing trainer. Yes, I read Muhammad Ali's autobiography and he was on every other page. Boxing is the right answer, well done. Back to you. Challenges, the high energy dance, the can-can, first became a popular music hall dance during which period? 1700s, 1800s, or 1900s? I think I'm to lose the track. Yeah, it was it was like, 18, yes. So it's the late 1800s. I'd have thought it was the 1800s. That's late what. 18. To lose certainly the pictures track. of dancers in, in, in that yes, sort of style. Yes, the track. Definitely, definitely not the 1700s. And no, but I'm sure it's definitely not hmm. 17. I agree. Yeah. Shall we? Yes. Yeah. Happy with that. For better or for worse, we're going for 1800s. You've got a memory of a Toulouse Lautrec poster. I think that's right. I think I think he did he did do a painting with all the mm. legs in the air. 1800s is right. Well done. <laughs> okay, kids. Behind at the moment. During which conflict was the Battle of Blenheim fought? Napoleonic Wars, War of the Spanish Succession, or Franco-Prussian War? Spanish Succession. Spanish succession. I think it's Spanish Succession. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Well, 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 Acronym. Blenheim Ramblings. Yeah. Who'd know the Yeah, yeah. Yes, I think so. Yeah. 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 We think that's the War of the Spanish Succession. War of the Spanish Succession is the right answer. <laughs> They're not thrown off easily, <laughs> these eggheads. OK, your third question. Get this one right and they may stumble and fall. This can be the, the tricky one. Get it wrong and it gives them a clear shot at goal. Drake was at number one in the UK singles charts with the song One Dance for how many consecutive weeks in 2016? Five, 10 or 15? Question from hell. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Any thoughts, yeah, any have, input, John? I have a fancy it was for longer than five Do you? weeks. Well, yeah. if you have a fancy, you well, go with he's, it. He's got, he's got, he's got teenage that, children, <laughs> which is the very tenuous thing that we're going to hold on to. So you're going for 10, are you? 
I, I have, I, I don't know. I think it might be 15. I think he was there for quite a long time. 15 is nearly four months. OK, so we'll give 10. No, no, we'll I'm just asking. Yeah. I'm just saying. The, sit it down in the middle and go 10. You sure? Yeah. How? I'm not sure. No. <laughs> OK. How strong is your inkling, as the eggheads always say, for 15? Because I don't want us to talk, talk no, no, out no, of it no. just as a blind it's 50, compromise. 50. I don't think, I don't think it's five. Right. Fair enough. OK. We'll but go I with think, you on that. I think, it, I, think it's, I think 10 is probably the, the best option. Okay. 15, as Ian says, is a long time. Right. I, I have absolutely no, nothing I don't, I don't to give on this. So, I, so. I, I think we should go 10. Right. I won't say John's... No. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have absolutely no idea on this. After some rather inconsequential discussion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to go with 10. OK, I, I see your logic, because you, you, you argued out of five, because that's not really long enough to make it important enough to be a question. And then we had 15 from John, and then Ian said, oh, well, that's a long time, that's four months. And, and then you kind of just you went down the middle and you went to 10 as a, as a sort of a compromise. I'm, I'm feeling bad for you because it's 15. Oh, it was 15, mm. yeah. There was a moment when I thought you were going to get it. I listened very carefully. You did, you did yeah. all you could, Roger. You chaired that very well. <laughs> so 15 is the answer. OK, Eggheads, it's in your hands now. If you get this right, the contest is over. If you get it wrong, we go to sudden death. In which US city was the home insurance building considered to be the first skyscraper built in 1885? Chicago. Los Angeles or Las Vegas? Yeah, it's Chicago. Chicago? Daniel. Is it Daniel Burnham? No, no wait, no, we're Ray. Okay, it's yeah, it's not Los Angeles or Las Vegas. Right? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. We think that's Chicago. 1885, the home insurance building. Do you know it? I would have gone for Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> the correct answer is Chicago. We say congratulations, eggheads. You have won. Would you have known the Drake? You would yes, have known that? Yeah. Or because you follow who's number one when? Yeah, and he was number one for a long just time. I can't believe it yeah. was number one for that long. It was, yeah, as, as we were saying, nearly four months. I think yeah. one more week it would have taken the record. It was an equal record. Or equal record. E Isn't equal that wet, wet, wet or somebody? Or? No, no, Brian, Brian Adams. Adams. Brian. Brian Adams. Another Canadian. Well, challenges, I'm sorry. The Eggheads have sort of done what they are quite good at doing, which is just nicking it on the third question of the mm. final, and it happens all the time. And it means they reign supreme over Quizland, so you won't be going home with the £2,000. I hope you've enjoyed your time. Oh, yes. Adam, it's been really another asked. go at the school reunion. Yes, that was the main motive. And, Mr Fox, if you're watching, you can be proud of them. <laughs> Eggheads, congratulations. Who will beat you? Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to take these eggheads down. It's now going to be £3,000 they're playing for. Till we quiz again, goodbye. Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. Hoping to get one over on our quiz champions today are the Fox Cubs. Now, this team were in the same sixth form class at Manchester Grammar School and recently reunited for the first time in nearly 50 years. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Roger and I'm an emeritus professor of law. Hi, I'm Graham and I'm a writer. Hi, I'm John and I'm a retired property consultant. Hi, I'm Ian and I'm a retired civil servant. Hi, I'm Richard and I'm a psychometrics consultant. So, Roger, team, welcome. Great to see you. Hello. 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 And, uh, Roger, was it great to see each other when you all reunited? Yes, it was, yes. And did you have that amazing thing where you can just pick up straight away? Oh, absolutely, yes. Really? Yes. And I should ask you about the team name. Fox Cubs relates to your teacher. He was our form master and English teacher, Jeff Fox. And still with us, I gather? Yes, still with us. And Knows what, maybe... all about this. <laughs> may be watching today and cheering you on. Uh, he says oh. he will, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a good teacher? Very good teacher, yes. That makes all the difference, doesn't it, hey, kids? Anyone, anyone here had a great teacher? Oh, yes, I had, a, I had a fantastic um, biology teacher. Yeah. Uh, and for, I was going to drop biology A-level, but it was, it was her that sort of encouraged me to keep with it. And now it's your career. Yeah. yeah, I had a great English teacher. 
So, good luck. Summon up the spirit of the class. <laughs> Stay united here in the face of the onslaught. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. If they fail to defeat the eggheads, that prize money rolls over to our next show. So, Fox Cubs, the eggheads have won just the last game. That means there's £2,000 for you if you win today. Would you like to try? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, please. please. OK, let's go for it. The first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of geography. You can choose either Judith, Beth, Pat, Steve or Chris. Uh, well, who's going to go for it? Do you, do you want to? Do you want to? <laughs> yes. I'm fine. Shall I go? Yes. OK. Graham. I'll go. OK, Thanks. Graham, our writer, against which I get any one of the five. Beth. Beth, yes, that's what I was going to think Just of. Yes, Beth. Beth. Please. So, OK, one of the newest eggheads. So, Graham from the Fox Cubs versus Beth from the eggheads on geography. And please, both of you, go to our question room now. Well, I understand you worked in a library, Graham, did you? Yes, I was a librarian for uh, nearly 40 years. And it, it was where? Oh, various different places. Most of the time I was working for a, a, an international law firm as their head of information services. But before that, I was at... Uh, Hull University and Kingston Polytechnic. And if, if we say to the A kids, University of Hull Library, what's Philip your immediate Larkin. name? You? Philip Larkin. Philip Larkin, yeah. who, you know, one of the undoubtedly great poets of the 20th century, who I understand worked in the library just down the corridor, did he? Oh, he was my boss. So, as somebody once said, you met him as he lived? Yeah, sure. He was rather, rather reserved, so one didn't <laughs> see him a lot. He stayed in his office a lot, but I, I just had a few very pleasant conversations with him over the, uh, the year or two that I was there. I promise you don't have to say he's a nice guy. I'm assuming he was quite grumpy at times. But... Oh, very, yes. <laughs> but those poems, you, do you love them yourself? I do. Yeah, remarkable, remarkable. Good stuff on geography, then. I'm sorry it's not arts and books, but there we go. Geography for you against Beth. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. Here we go. Geographically speaking, which of these countries occupies a large proportion of the Scandinavian peninsula? Sweden, Denmark or Iceland? Well, Iceland isn't in the peninsula. Um, and I assume the peninsula is the bit that includes Norway, Sweden and Finland, so Denmark wouldn't be included in that. So I think the answer must be Sweden. Sweden is right. Well done. Over to you, Beth. Hobart is the capital of which state of Australia? Hobart, is that New South Wales, Western Australia, or Tasmania? Uh, well, luckily, I'm not afflicted with the same gaping hole of Australia as Lisa is. I'm pretty sure that's Tasmania. Yes, yeah, she would fly into a panic if she saw this question. Tasmania is right. OK, Graham. The equator passes through which of these countries? Mexico, Indonesia, or South Africa? Well, the equator passes through South America, so it won't go through Mexico. It certainly doesn't get anywhere near South Africa, so the answer must be Indonesia. You're very good. Indonesia's right. So, Graham, ahead. Can Beth catch up? What is the approximate population of Saudi Arabia? Beth, is it 32 million, 64 million, or 96 million? Wow. Um, hmm. It's a big country. Does it have a similar population to Great Britain? Or does it have half of that? Hmm, probably half of that. 32 million. You've done very well there. Mm. It's not an easy question. 32 million is right. Toe to toe, <laughs> Graham. Here we go. Your third question. Wagadougou is the capital of which African country? Is it Benin, Burkina Faso, or Botswana? Well, the capital of Benin is Porto Novo. The capital of Botswana is Gaborone. And the capital of Burkina Faso is Ouagadougou. Good quizzing. Burkina Faso is right. He knows his capitals, Beth. Yeah, he does. We can tell a quizzer a mile off, can't yeah. we? OK, your question to stay in. What is the capital of the French département of Gironde? Bordeaux, Paris or Le Havre? And the Gironde. Uh, the, well, that's certainly not Paris, and Le Havre is up on, um, on the Brittany Normandy coast, so it's got to be Bordeaux. Well done again, Bordeaux it is. So perfect round for you both so far, three out of three. We go to sudden death, Graham. It gets a little bit harder. I don't give you options. Are you ready? Yeah. Which Benelux country has a name that translates from its native language into English as low country? Um, the Netherlands. Netherlands is right. 
Nederland as it is to them. Best to stay in. Mount Baekdu, the highest mountain in North Korea, lies on the border between that country and which other? <laughs> now, now, with Lisa's gaping hole over Australia, my gaping hole is over East Asia. Um, well, I'm going to, fingers crossed, and hope that North Korea joins itself up with China. So, China. China is correct. OK, Graham. Netherthorpe, Pittsmoor and Darnell are suburbs of which English city? So, we're talking possibly moorland. I've never heard of any of them. I'm going to go for Nottingham. Do you know this, Beth? No, I was maybe slightly more north of Nottingham, but Leeds, possibly, Sheffield? Sheffield is the answer, Graham. Um, so, Beth, you have a chance to take the round now with this question. The flag of Ghana features a black star and how many different coloured bands? Three. Three is right. Red, yellow and green. Well done, you're in the final. Well played, though, Graham. That was a really fearsome challenge you put in there. <laughs> you're very good. Please come back to us, both of you, and we will play on. As it stands, the Fox Cubs have lost one brain from the final round. The Eggheads haven't lost any so far. The next subject for you is science. So who was the science standout in class? Uh, we didn't do science. We didn't do science. <laughs> <laughs> there was no We're swan. All liberal arts. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes. Okay. I think I've been nominated as the fall guy here. John, okay. John's uh, our expert on science. Retired <laughs> property consultant <laughs> against which egghead? Anyone but Beth. Judith. I would say Judith. Judith. Be, of those yeah. Yes. Judith, Judith, please. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I can hear a strange noise. Is that you <laughs> saying no or it's yes? It's me or... groaning. 